Here we want to find the derivative of g of x equals x to the power of natural log x in two ways, using logarithmic differentiation and using this fact about logarithms and exponents that b to the x equals e to the natural log b to the x. Okay, so a lot going on here. Let's focus on part a, logarithmic differentiation. What in the world does that mean? It's a profoundly useful technique, especially when you have an x in the base and an x in the exponent. That's almost a clear giveaway that you're going to use logarithmic differentiation, x in the base and in the exponent. So how does this work? It's quite the process, but once you get the hang of it, it has a really nice flow to it. So let's step through these. Step one says write the function as y equals f of x. Okay, so I'm going to write this as y equals x natural log x. Step two, take the natural log of both sides. Okay, so I'm going to do natural log, natural log. Step three, use the properties of logarithms to simplify the right-hand side. So what this does is this brings this exponent down to the front. And that's the amazing part of logarithmic differentiation, is it solves the problem of having an x in the exponent. That's the whole idea of why we do this. Okay, so now let's rewrite it. So we have natural log of y equals natural log of x times natural log of x. I'll even rewrite this again as natural log of y equals, how about this, natural log of x quantity squared. Okay, step four, take the derivative of both sides. When we take the derivative of natural log of y, we get one over y, but we're taking the derivative with respect to x, not the derivative with respect to y. So let's add that in here. The derivative with respect, our wrt, with respect to x. All right, it's the x derivative. So when we do that, we need one over y, y prime. That's the chain rule here applied to natural log of y. On the right hand side, we have the chain rule again. We do the outside to natural log x times the derivative of the inside, one over x. Step five, solve for y prime. So let's go up here with it. Solving for y prime gives us, and y prime is what we're trying to, to solve for in the end, y times, let's write this as two natural log x all over x. And finally, step six, we substitute our original y equals f of x. Recall back at the very beginning of this whole process, we decided that y was x natural log, x to the power of natural log x. So this gives us y prime equals x to the power of natural log x times two natural log x all over x. Finally, with a little bit of simplification, we can write this as uh, let's how about let's do a two out in front x to the natural log of x minus one all times natural log x. This idea of taking the log of both sides to solve a tricky equation, especially when an x is stuck up in the exponent like that, will be something we return to throughout Calc 1 and in Calc 2. So keep this in your back pocket. It's a profoundly useful method. Let's take a look at part b. We can solve this using this fact, b to the x equals e to the natural log b to the x. This gets the job done, but I recommend using logarithmic differentiation, um, but it's good to see that we can also use this other method. So let's, let's proceed to part b here. So here for part b, we can rewrite this derivative as g of x equals e to the natural log x to the natural log x. All right, I just used this fact that we can replace the base in any exponential function with e to the natural log. That's true because e to the x and natural log of x are inverse functions, and inverse functions always undo each other when you compose them with each other. So this is legit. Let's use the properties of logarithms now to get this natural log up in the, in the higher exponent down one level. That's just the properties of logarithms. So then we have g of x equals e to the natural log x times natural log x. Well, how about we write that as e to the natural log of x squared, natural log of x quantity squared, not the, not the natural log of x squared, the quantity natural log of x squared. You need to be careful with those parentheses. Well, the derivative of e to the u 
is e to the u times u prime. That's simply the chain rule applied to e to the u. So here our derivative g prime of x will be e to the natural log of x squared times that derivative times 2 natural log x. There's a chain rule again times the derivative of the inside again 1 over x. Well now we just have some cleanup work to do. I'm going to rewrite this e to the natural log x squared again. I'm just going to back out of what we did before. So I'm going to write it as e to the natural log of x to the power of natural log x. I'm just undoing the steps we did here, here, and here to get into this predicament. All right, all that times 2 natural log x. And we can write this as all over x. Well, the e and the natural log are inverses, so they undo each other, which finally we can rewrite this as 2x to the natural log x minus 1 times natural log x. That ought to do it. Which you may recall is the same answer we got before. So, I don't know, this method is neat, but I would actually kind of avoid that and focus on logarithmic differentiation. That's going to be much more universally applied, and that's what I'll use moving forward for these kinds of derivatives.